Good morning, and welcome to another week as we experience the joy of Trinity Sunday. This morning we are back in the college full, here observing the feeding of all of our birds as they gather around for full time. We trust that you had a wonderful weekend and that you are prepared for the week. In some instances, persons are going back into their full activity and I trust that we will do so with wisdom. It is always a joy to watch animals feeding and they teach us so much from their coming together and sharing, although sometimes it can be a little squabbling, but it is a joy to watch. And so this morning, as the birds fly around us, we will listen now to that wonderful hymn, Thou Whose Almighty Word, Chaos and Darkness Heard. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord, for your loving kindness is greater than the heavens. Let us pray. Most gracious and merciful Father, we, your unworthy servants, come before you thanking you for grace and mercy towards us. We thank you for the rest of the past night and the gift of this new day. As we go about our daily lives, we pray that your presence will remain with us and that you will surround us with your mighty power. We bring before you all requests and prayers and ask that you be with them. Grant us the faith to trust in you in every situation in our lives and lead us only where you would have us go. Protect us now and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, 
from whom all good proceeds. Grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue our readings today, and we are still in Matthew's Gospel, and we're reading from Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And the disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the, go to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the reading. When one hears the gospel according to Matthew, one is always mindful of Matthew's particular slant right in from within the context of the Jewish community. And, and you can hear that slant in this passage this morning as Matthew speaks of Jesus' purpose, perhaps as he understood it. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And one can hear that in, in different ways. One can hear that from the perspective of Jesus assured of what his mission was. But you could also hear it from a place that might say that was Jesus completely aware of what his complete purpose was? Or was that awareness something that was unfolding as time went by? You know, it's like you can grow up in a particular tradition and you can understand yourself from that tradition. And yet there is something in you that, that invites you and encourages you to explore something else. And you can be adamant that, no, this is where I belong, this is what I know, this is what I've understood. But something happens, some experience takes place, and you've got to recognize that your view is a narrow view, and it needs broadening. And I, I, I feel a little of that in this dialogue this morning. Jesus, as he is challenged by the woman, he ignores her. His disciples said to him, says to him, well, send her away. Don't, don't, um, don't let her keep shouting after us. And Jesus says to them, I have come only to the lost sheep of Israel. 
But the woman, in hearing his comment, she once again says, Lord, help me. And he says, it is, it is not fair to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. It is not, it is not in my doing or my ability to, to change my purpose. I am here to address the children of Israel, not, not you. And the woman says, yes, but even though you are not here for me and my kind, we might still be able to benefit from what's left back, from the, from the extras, from the drop-ins. And if we can have the drop-ins, if we can have the crumbs, I'm sure that that in itself will be more than enough to satisfy our needs. So we're not preventing you from feeding the children. All we are saying is, can we have the crumbs? Can we have the leftovers? It's a really interesting dialogue. And Jesus perceives in the woman such faith, such faith, such, such understanding. Her daughter is possessed and she is aware of the power of this man of God. And she humbles herself. She kneels. And she is underground. She is awaiting the crumbs. And she is not too proud to await the crumbs. Because for her, The presence of God is in each crumb. The power of God is in each crumb. In one of the Gospels, not in the canon of the New Testament, there is a statement that says, if you lift up a stone, I'm there. God is in everything, every blade of grass, every cell. God is present in it. For if God is not present in it, then it, it, it cannot exist. It doesn't make God small. It make God, makes God even larger than we can even imagine. In each blade of grass, in each strand of hair, in each cell, in each vibration, God is. And God is. We need to ponder that somewhat. God is. I think the ancients understood that in a way that we don't and we or those who have taught us interpret it to mean that what they were saying was that the blade of grass is God and therefore you worship the blade of grass. I don't think the ancients were saying that. I think the ancients came to an understanding of the divine presence within and maybe their language was not our language and we didn't fully understand what they were saying, but I think they got it in ways that we haven't. We have created our God up in the air and we have these wonderful pictures that we draw with, with a big old man with a long white beard 
sitting on the throne somewhere, looking down or holding out his finger. And that's the image that we have carried in our world. This judgmental God that is looking down at us and writing down our reaction. The ancients had a God that was in everything, was in everything, and was giving life to everything, was day by day working through this journey we call life. A God who is present. A God who is imminent. Yet not contained totally and completely in this. But a God who is within, within each fragment of existence. And that's the God that the woman identified with in this morning's reading. A God who has this divine power present even in the crumbs. So she doesn't need to sit at the table. She doesn't need to have her own plate of food. She can wait. And whatever drops, because things always drop. Even in Matthew's recalling of the feeding of the 5,000, he makes a point to speak to the crumbs that were left back. And Jesus saying, gather the crumbs, gather the crumbs, that nothing may be lost. Because in the crumbs themselves, in the crumbs, there was the divine presence. Because these crumbs were part of that five barley loaves and two fish. These crumbs were part of a divine intervention. These crumbs belong to the divine. These crumbs have within them the divine presence. So the woman asked for the crumbs this morning. Yes, the crumbs. Well, that we would come to a place where in our journey we would be willing to receive the crumbs. And we would understand the importance of recognizing God's divine presence in the smallest of things. You don't have to look for God only in the massive Sometimes God works in a massive way in the small things. I don't have to walk across this lake in order for me to recognize the divine presence. I could simply recognize the divine presence in the thoughts that I'm receiving as I share these moments with you. Thoughts beyond my own self. Thoughts that awaken me as I trust they awaken you. For in that is God. So can we take a lesson from this woman this morning? Can we hear her in a different way, this Canaanite woman. Can we hear her reminding us that God is in all things and all things are in God? Can we hear her saying to us that we don't have to look for the massive things of life? That if we develop a disposition a disposition that causes us to be open to and willing to recognize the divine presence in 
everything, whether we judge it good or bad, if we can recognize the divine presence in everything, that in our moments when we need help, in our moments when we are in some need or another, we can know that that help can come from anywhere. And rather than fixating on a particular methodology, rather than fixating on a particular person, we can be open. And I'm sure that we have experienced this before where we have knelt and prayed for something. We have earnestly asked God's help. And in our minds, we, we had the avenue lined up. We, 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 we knew what it is we wanted and we knew from where it would come. But to our amazement, it came from perhaps one of the most unlikeliest sources. And the danger there, the danger there is that when it comes from the most unlikely source, we run the risk of missing it. because it didn't happen the way we wanted it to happen. Someone like that old familiar story of Naaman, the leper. He wanted it in a particular way. And he was willing to forego it because it, it didn't happen in a way that he would expect it to occur. The Canaanite woman wasn't interested in how it happened. She only understood that it needed to happen and she was willing to receive it however it was offered. Are you open to receive God's divine presence in whatever way it's offered? Knowing that God is in all things, and all things are in God. I offer this passage this morning for you to reflect on, and I trust that you will take these moments and jot down, either in this live chat, or you can join me on Friday evening at 7.30 where we can chat on this or other things. But do make a note so that by Friday you wouldn't have forgotten that which had arisen in your heart. I pray God will continue to guide us all May that divine gift which has come to us, which we call awareness and understanding, may that divine gift continue to build in us, opening us up from day to day, from moment to moment. May we come to know God in new ways. In the midst of all that is going on around us, may we come to know God in new ways. May we take that inner journey and may we allow that inner journey to inform all that we say and do in this world. May all this be fueled by divine love, by divine grace. May we know God in new ways, recognizing that even in the crumbs, we can just get a crumb. Whoa.
I wonder if that was a crumb. Amen. Whatever we get, we know that it's divinely inspired. However it comes to us, we say thank you. Have a blessed day. Be safe. And yes, the world is in turmoil. But we oftentimes need turmoil to birth something new. Because I know that what's going on in the world outside, for many of us, that same thing is going on within us. So be still and allow whatever needs to occur within you to do so. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your heart mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen.